Good day and welcome to another A Week at the Plot. Though actually, as you most probably gather from that footage, it's a bit damp and wet down here today. What I didn't say is after I put the fruit trees in yesterday, which if you're watching Planet Vegetaria will be yesterday, but if you're watching this on YouTube will be a week ago. What I didn't say is that after I put those fruit bushes in, I gave them a really, really good water. And as I said, I was going to put chicken manure pellets on them. And that's exactly what I have done just now. The wonderful thing about it being damp is that the whole area of that soil is now damp. I've put the chicken manure pellets down and with this drizzle slash rain that we're getting, those chicken manure pellets will take in that moisture, start breaking down and then start putting their nutrients into the soil or the nutrients will start falling into the soil, which is absolutely great. So I'm really pleased about that. Another thing that I am pleased about is we got our arrival of potatoes. So um, I haven't opened them yet. I've just brought them down. I'm going to open these another day. I'm just going to leave them in another box for a couple of days and just leave them in the cool of the poly polytunnel. The two layers of cardboard and the packaging that is in here will keep them uh, well above freezing and we're not supposed to freeze here at the moment either. So fingers crossed. Another fabulous thing. Look. Multi-purpose bin. It's got handles. I found that on the roadside earlier when I was coming down. So um, I think that will be pretty useful. I'm thinking about doing some asparagus crowns, which actually I will be doing in 30 litre tubs. But I did think to myself, oh, that would be quite good for asparagus crowns. But you know what? It's really robust and it will be quite good for something else. So that's great. Another great thing that's happened today let me show you. We have germination of our coriander here, which is fab. At the back is corn salad, which has come on quite a bit in a week, but still nothing in the parsley. And we've also got just over here, we've got polyanthus, nothing there yet. But I'm really pleased about the coriander. And let me show you the sweet peas, peas and mange too. Here we have our Oregon sugar pod mange too. Then it's train driver mountain range peas, which we'll also be having as mange too. And then over here are the sweet peas. They've been up, I think, just over a week now, and I have turned them around. The sweet peas are up here and were sort of bending towards the light this way. So I turned them around on Saturday. But look at these train driver mountain range. That's about three inches. This one here is about four inches. And there is three seeds germinated in every one of those apart from this one at the front where there's four and i only think i put three seeds in each of those so they're doing incredibly well so i'm really really pleased with those the mange too the oregon sugar pod on the left doing well as well and yeah the sweet peas on the right seem quite happy which is fabulous I am, however, covering them with this lid each day, each evening, because, you know, we have the issues with mice coming in and eating the peas in the polytunnel a few months ago when we did pea shoots. So, yeah, they'll definitely be covered again this evening. So I'm going to leave it there for today. Quite a short start to a week at the plot. Though it was quite a 
busy weekend in one way or another and this morning there was also quite a lot to do at home. I'm hoping tomorrow we'll be able to get on with some seed sowing which I had anticipated I would be doing today but I need that sort of quieter time this afternoon so the chicken manure pellets and bringing the potatoes down will actually do for me today. I'm going to pop into the shed to do a little bit of tearing up of paper or cardboard in fact and also some note taking I just want to to make a few notes of something that I, I thought of when I arrived today and then I'm going to go home and have a cup of tea. I'll see you again tomorrow. Bye. Good day. It's quite a bright day today. The sun is out. The sky is blue. There's lots of cloud. Not to spoil the view. <laughs> Sorry, it just that song just suddenly came into my head. Um, yeah, the sun is out. The cloud, it's overcast, but no it's not overcast it's wispy clouds up there so i can see the blue it's really pale but there's lots of wispy clouds and today it is really breezy so i've had to come into the shed even a little bit more than normal to get away from the the breeze so actually it's a perfect day to get on with some february seed sowing so that's what i'm going to do Obviously, the seed sowing videos that I do will be part of the Grow Along series that I'm doing. So you'll be able to see exactly what I do and, and what I sow when those come out over the, the coming few days stroke week. Um, but what I am doing is um, lettuce today. We oh, can't see that lettuce. I'm also going to be sowing some perpetual beet, which we really like. And then we've got some Jamaican peppers and tiny Tim tomatoes from Brian. And from Vivi, we've got her orange bell. How can I hold that up? Orange bell and paprika peppers. I'm also going to be doing some onions and beetroot and turnips and a first sowing of brassicas. And these brassicas are going to be our Groninger Brussels sprouts. So, yeah, let's get on and do it. And I'll show you what I've done once I've done it. So quite a mammoth seed sowing session today, all of which will be in our Grow Along videos in greater detail. But from the back, we've got Burpee's Iceberg Lettuce. Then we've got Amish deer tongue lettuce and paravere parsley, spring onions performer, Groninger Brussels sprouts, and then we've got Goldana turnip, which is a yellow turnip, Burpee's golden beetroot. I can't read that one. Av um, avalanche that's avalanche that's it <laughs> which is a white beetroot this is de chiogia beetroot and then let's move over here we've got eight cells of swiss chard bright lights we've got eight cells of perpetual spinach we've got brian's tiny tim tomatoes then we've got Morrison's long yellow pepper that seeds that we save from a yellow long pepper we bought at Morrison's and then finally Vivi's orange bell peppers here Vivi's paprika peppers here and Brian's Jamaica peppers at the front here so yeah that's quite a seed sowing day today and relax I mean seed sowing is relaxing though I have to say and I'm, I'm sure Vivi finds the same and Jane and Rue and others that do YouTube videos 
you know, you're trying to get as much information over in as short a space of time as possible. And there is anxiety to that. So even though we really enjoy, in most parts, doing the videos, sometimes the anxiety level is quite high. <laughs> But you know what? We're hopefully passing on information and we're passing on our passion, I hope. And that's really quite important. Now, what I did see before I left the poly is the Train Driver Mountain Range and the Oregon Sugar Pod Mange 2. And in fact, even the Sweet Peas, their routes are through the bottom of the modules that they're in. So I think what I'm going to do is bring them outside. In fact, yeah, I'm going to do that. I'm going to bring them outside, keep the um, propagation lid, propagator lid on top, but bring them outside. That means me coming back down later, but I'd be doing this anyway. Yeah, I'm going to bring them outside and start hardening them off because I think those train driver mountain range and also the Oregon sugar pod will be going in the ground pretty soon. And then what I'll do is I'll put some fleece over them with the sweet peas. What I will do, I think, is pop them on maybe next weekend. I think I'll be doing that. So, yeah, I'm going to do that before I go home edit this and then once I've edited this and uploaded to Planet Vegetaria I will get on with the grow along videos and editing those. Right, busy days. Oh and I also put up the creation of the soft fruit bed this morning as well so I'll put a link in here to that. See you soon. Bye. system there.
good day. So that's six Portuguese cabbage planted up. These have overwintered outside and are growing quite strong now. These two here were always the larger ones by far. And as you saw, I had a little helper. Didn't really help, but um, it was a joy to see him. So yeah, these are our Portuguese cabbage. And I was going to do a segment on Portuguese cabbage, but the fabulous Vivi beat me to it. So I'll put a link in to her video that she did yesterday because we gave her two Portuguese cabbage plants when we went and saw her as part of our social bubble at the beginning of February. And she took them down to her garden yesterday and did the video or a few days ago and did the video. So we'll put a link into that. And she talks about Portuguese cabbage, which um, is also known in Spain as Asturian cabbage. And it's known in the Channel Islands in Guernsey and Jersey as the walking stick cabbage. So, yeah, do have a look at Vivi's video and uh, learn a bit more about Portuguese cabbage. A little joy to greet me today. Germination in our parsley, which is fabulous. So the coriander has grown pretty well in a few days and the corn salad which is this one at the end, is doing okay too. So very happy to have the parsley up. We only sowed more parsley yesterday of a curly leaf variety. So obviously this one decided that it needed to pick up its game and get germinating. Oh, that was lovely. That was lovely. I've been at my desk since about 7.30 this morning editing, working, banking, uh, writing, a whole gamut of things, doing PAYE for a client. And I really needed this time at the allotment this afternoon, just, just maybe an hour and a half. I've been here about 45 minutes. I've really been wanting to get that Portuguese cabbage in. I've been wanting to do it since at least the beginning of February, but of course we got that cold snap that really lowered our temperatures here. And I wanted to ensure that I was putting those Portuguese cabbage in, i.e. planting them out, though they have been on the bench over the winter. I wanted to make sure that there was going to be a good spell of about two weeks of relatively warm weather so that their roots can really get into that soil. And we have relatively warm weather for the coming few weeks. In fact, mainly through March. Though interestingly, the forecast at the moment says that we're going to dip back down to zero and one degrees from about the 6th of April to about the 14th of April. That's overnight temperature, but we'll be in double figures uh, during the daytime, which is great. So by the time that those roots from the Portuguese cabbage are in there, they're not going to have any harm come to them. So yeah, that's it. I've got a few other jobs that I want to get on with, but you know what? What I really want to do now, and I'm gonna get on and do it on my own, maybe listening to the radio, is just weed the flower border bed. Oh, and I saw a crocus. A crocus has self-seeded where we had our broad beans last year, the Luster Ottono broad beans. A crocus has self-seeded there, so I want to take that out and put it into our flower border bed. So I'm going to get on and do that now, and I'll see you again for something else tomorrow. Bye!
Good day, and what an auspicious day. I have started work on the tomato vinyl bed. Finally, finally. Much of the work that is going to go on there, you'll see in the lucky 13th episode of starting a new plot when it comes out, which will be maybe in a couple of weeks time, maybe because there's a lot of work to do on this bed. The bed behind me, the fruit bed just here, um, that took, that's 3.3 square meters. I think I worked out that this one is something like 12 square meters. So it's gonna take me a good, I would have thought eight hours to actually fork over that bed to make sure that every, bit of weed that I can possibly get is out. Obviously the banner has been on top and um, the weeds will have been suppressed but hey ho you know who knows what is well we do know what's underneath because I've actually shown just a bit of it um, in the footage that is going to be the 13th episode. Let us just have a look at the soil then. I've pulled back the banners that were covering this. And you can see it's a large space. I think it's about 5.8 meters or 5.2 meters by two meters. And yeah, I mean, we come over here, look at this bindweed, cooch grass, nettle, Cooch grass, cooch grass, bindweed there, bramble here. But you know what? Bit by bit, bit by bit. Gosh, it looks big from here. Look at that. Oh, doesn't that look glorious? Oh, oh, I've just got excited. <laughs> Oh dear. A lot of work to do though. A lot of work to do. Right, I'll leave it there for today and see you again soon. Maybe something else tomorrow or maybe we'll be carrying on here. Bye. Good day. I caught that first shot as I was coming to the allotment this morning. It's a very early cherry tree down the road from where we live and it was just covered in bees. So as well as being able to hear the parakeets and other birds, I hope you could hear the buzz of the bees that was going on because it was quite intense to my ears. Then when I got here I opened the polytunnel and certainly 
the beds there needed a water and I've removed some of the leaves from our washing up bowl ponds because I don't want to have too many leaves in there and what was lovely to see is that there are water snails in there which I know we had last year but they've really proliferated and then finally I've just been doing the last bits to this flower border bed I want to make sure it stays a bit rugged whilst at the same time being tamed if you see what I mean so we've got a whole mix of wildflowers and bulbs and non wildflowers in here which I hope are going to do really really well this year so today I'm just doing some pottering before cracking on with the tomato vinyl bed so I'll leave it there today and see you again tomorrow bye good day another rethink this is the line that I went down yesterday with the spade and then when I moved everything back and I moved this way again today I've decided to extend this bed the width of this bed I think by about 25 centimeters 20 centimeters maybe which means pulling this rope in a bit so I've moved the trough in a bit and here as well I'm not sure at the moment whether I'll line it up right down here with the edge of this one I don't think I will no I think I'm gonna leave this there well not leave this here but leave the edge at the base along here so that it, it is a bit further out than this one my OCD won't actually worry me too much on that because I know that the distance here between this container and here is governed by me being able to get through with a wheelbarrow but yeah so there we are I've decided to extend this bed in width by about 20 centimeters so I've taken the corner from here pulled it out to here taken the corner from here pulled it out to here and now I'm just going to tidy up these bits so that it's a bit less confusing this is almost looking down the line and yeah I think I'm happier with that it also goes back to what I was saying about the the area around here just undulating a little bit but it took the pulling back of the this completely the banner completely and opening up this end this morning for me to realize that I did want to extend this out and of course as you will know if you watch the 12th episode of this tomato planter is also going to be going so I will be extending this bed in the similar way to this bed and this bed yeah happy with that happy with that right now I'm going to crack on and do another spade depth insert right along the inside edge fab see you soon bye good day or rather not quite such a good day look buried plastic bags I'm not gonna do any more than that with my with these gloves on but if I can move those over This is a metal rim, solid metal rim of something. 
it must be about oh, 18 inches, 20 inches across, maybe even two foot. And I've excavated down here and I've gone down one and a half feet down here and it continues down. So somebody I think has buried this maybe as a fire pit or just a junk pit. But you know what? I don't have the energy this year to, to take this out. Not with having to complete this bed, do the other vinyl bed and get the wildlife pond sorted. So what I've decided to do is take as much plastic out as I can. And then I'm only going to take the bed up to here. And this, I think I'm going to cover up and put my blueberries on top of here because they're in containers of ericaceous compost. So that's what I think I'm going to do. But certainly I don't have the energy this year to dig this whole thing out. But what I am going to do is change gloves to more rugged gloves. I'll put bramble gloves on for that glass. Shard of sharp glass. And see what... I mean, you know, I don't know what's in here either. So I don't want to go too much if you see what I mean. But yeah, that's what I'm going to do. It's a good thing I extended this bed out by 20 centimetres or so because I'm going to lose this growing area. But as I say, I can put blueberries there. Right, I'm going to crack on and we'll leave it there for this week's A Week at the Plot. And I'll see you next week. Or if you're on Planet Vegetaria, I'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Oh, just one fork. Oh my, look at the size of those.